a couple introductory slides and then it'll only take maybe five minutes or so. And then after that, we'll just go through, um, the plan is to just go through an order. If um, anyone has a need to present at a time different than the time there, uh, they would naturally do it. Um, you could kind of let me know in the chat and we can, we can move you if you're, or if you're not available right when your slot comes up, we can come back to you. But uh, the overall plan would be just to go through them in order. I think that'll be easiest for everyone. And, and that way we'll, uh, it's always easy to tell which one's next and how far through the agenda we are. So we're at the top of the hour, but I see, uh, you know, several people are still joining. So we'll give it uh, two, three minutes at least. And then if, uh, and then we should be able to get started. I know for some of you, it's quite late. And for others of you, it's quite early the next day. So uh, appreciate everyone being here. Okay, haven't seen anyone join in the last uh, minute or so, so and we're a few minutes past. So I think we're, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the session is being recorded, so uh, people who join late will always be able to catch the recording. Okay, so welcome back to, uh, well, in this case, the closing session of the, uh, the hackathon. Hopefully you had a good week, and um, this is our opportunity to, to share what we did. Uh, first of all, just a reminder of why we're here, you know, really to advance the pace and relevance of IETF standards, uh, and also to just put more focus on uh, writing code, uh, bringing in, you know, and kind of helping developers in general contribute more to IETF, get more involved in IETF. Um, Certainly writing code is important and this event uh, is, is, in addition to working on existing IETF drafts, also a big part of it is kind of introducing people into the IETF who might not be as familiar with it, but uh, give them the ability to, uh, to get involved and uh, in a way that's comfortable and uh, very uh, productive for them. And oftentimes that's through working on code more so than just reviewing the drafts and providing comments. So a reminder of the, the IETF note well, basically everything at the IETF, all IETF contributions fall under uh, the terms of the note well. 
as we discussed in the opening, the, the code that you work on may have different uh, license and uh, rules around the, its use and, and what you need to do. But in terms of the presentations that you uh, give here, those will be uh, IETF contributions and, uh, and they fall under the terms of the note well. So if you haven't uh, familiarized yourself with that, uh, I suggest you do that. You know, we had really good uh, participation for this. I, last I checked, we had 268 people register. We had 24 projects. Looks like at least 15 of you are planning on presenting them. That's fantastic. Um, and um, whether you're presenting your project or not, uh, very important to um, to upload it to the uh, to the wiki. Uh, sorry, to the um, the IETF. Uh, hackathon github org and um, there is a repo there for ietf 109 project presentations if you go to that there are some instructions about how to do that if you didn't get your pre presentation uploaded in time for uh, the closing here uh, you're still free to share it from wherever you have it uh, just make sure that you get it uploaded and, uh, and if you need to make changes after the presentation, you know, that, that's fine too. Uh, we just want to make sure that we capture the results, whether they were presented or not, and that they remain there for people to check out. And it's, it's really a good um, uh, reference for later on. Now, a reminder, these presentations are uh, they're to be short, just quick summaries about what you were trying to solve and what you achieved. And you know, we really like, like to learn, like, not only what you did, but but you know what did you learn from it, and uh, perhaps more importantly, in some cases, what did you find out or figure out that you would bring back to the working group in terms of uh, if you were, for example, implementing a draft, what worked, what didn't, what was challenging, um, any good feedback you'd be bringing back into your working group uh, would be great to share here. And then hopefully you have the ability to share it during the working group session too. You have some agenda time. I know many of you have been doing that and that's fantastic. Um, also, it's, it's great to know when you uh, work with some people outside of the typical IHF community, perhaps uh, getting involved with some uh, open source uh, project that's you know, in another uh, community, perhaps with the Linux Foundation or with Apache or something like that and you are working with folks from that community, uh, that's good to know. Also, if you did a project that crossed, you know, IETF boundaries into um, work that another SDO is doing, that, that's really interesting to know as well. So with that, um, I will quickly switch back to the list of projects that are scheduled to present. And if you're wondering where that list is, you can go to the wiki, the hackathon wiki, and, and use that and find it there. And I'll show you where it's at here. So here I am on just the hackathon wiki. And if you go down into the agenda, you can see for the closing session, uh, there's a link here to the results presentation schedule. And when I click on that, that has all the presentations that we're planning on having. And as I mentioned at the, uh, the start, before maybe some of you joined, the plan is to just go through them in order. And so without any more delay, oh, and I see, wait, just let me see what's going on in the chat. Oh, thank you for pasting it in the chat. That was very helpful, Karsten. Glad you got to do that. Okay, so uh, we'll start with uh, performance evaluation for APN6. I'll stop sharing. We can see your video, and if you request uh, to share the screen, I'll grab that, and you can share your presentation. Don't hear your audio yet. Hello, can you hear my voice? There we go. Yep, we hear you now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay.
Okay, can you see the presentation? Yeah, sure can. Okay, let's start. So, hello everyone. My name is Wu Weihong, and I'm from Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunications. The topic of my presentation is the performance evaluation of APN6. Well, at the last hackathon, we briefly introduced IFIT and APN6. The former is for telemetry, while the latter works for application-aware traffic control, and we also showed the implementation and the simulation of them based on P4 and its software switch called BMV2. APN6 utilizes the IPv6 hop-by-hop -hop option to indicate the application, the user, the flow, and so forth, and the op option can also imply the requirement of quality. Here we show some related documents about APN6 and specifically the application or where ID option, structure one. This ID option includes four fields, namely SOA level, API ID, user ID, and flow ID. In this hackathon, we transplanted the demo of APN6 from BMV2 to a real P4 switch. The brand of the switch is TradeDX, and its ASIC is the barefoot Tofino. And then we tested the processing latency of encapsulating or inserting the application aware ID option structure one. Well, the implemented functions are shown in the slide. The, the functions contain the switching based on IPv6 DA, the determining whether to insert the ID option and the inserting of it. And finally is to get the processing latency. After we compiled the P4 program, we can get the MAU resource occupation directly. There are two processing about APN6, namely the determining and the inserting. The maximum number of the related entries is set to 1024. And the table shows the results. We can see all the mentioned resources are occupied less than 1.5%. There are two experiments to evaluate the processing latency. It's easy to understand. The experiment one has no any options encapsulated, while the experiment two has the ID option. We send 50,000 packs in total in each experiment and get the results. And all the results are shown in nanoseconds. From this table, we can see the difference between the average processing latency of this experiment are about only 6.6 .6 nanoseconds. This difference is caused by the processing of APN6. And then we simply analyzed the results. We firstly used the KS test to prove that they are both in accordance with the normal distribution. After that, we calculated some probabilities the results are shown in these two tables. For example, if we got 10,000 packets, the probability of that their average latency increasing is less than 1.80% is about 1%. But if we see the average increasing is less than 1.82%, the probability is 100%. If we get one packet, the probability of that is latency increasing is less than 1.80% is about 50%. And if we assume the increasing is 2%, the probability is 88%. We can draw a conclusion that the, about the encapsulating of APN6 ID option, its latency overhead is 1.81% at the macro level and 2.4% at the micro. And in the future, we will deploy the People switch on CNE and test IFIT and APN6 on it. CNE is a cross-domain experimental network which allows us to do some uh, better experiments. And uh, finally, if you have some puzzles or interests, don't hesitate to contact us. And uh, that's all. Thanks for listening. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so next up, uh, Yang Mediator Framework.
Okay. I believe so. Can you say some, something again? It was a little faint. Oh, hi, Charles. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, it's a little faint, though. A little thing? Okay, okay. I will come closer to the phone. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. We see your slides. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Liu Yongbo. I am a PhD student from Southeast University in China. For this hackathon, our team's project is Mediator Framework Project. Mediator is a framework for the third developer to implement young model conversion. Here are some links of the relevant drafts of our project. Mediator offers support for the translation of young models from different vendors or standard organizations. For Mediator, there are three ways of deployment. First is independent. Second, it can be integrated with controller or integrated with devices. The picture on the right shows the ways of independent deployment, with which Mediator will be deployed as an independent network node. Our current implementation uh, is based on the scenario of 4G access. The, this task is to configure BGP and VPN for devices. It involves a conversion between IETF Young and Windows M. The main workflow of our demo is looked like in the picture on the right. The, the Ansible we use as a controller will connect to Mediator with a, a plugin, and the Mediator will translate the message and return it back to Ansible. The Ansible will send the translated configuration to the devices. Here are the sample messages we intercepted from the project. The input is a message instantiated from IETF L3 and M model. Our goal is to generate the output that is correspond to the vendor's network instance model. For, for now, we have developed Mediator framework, which provides Python API. And we, for this project, we developed the translation scripts between IETF L3 and M model and render native YAM. And to integrate it with Ansible, we developed a plugin. And uh, last, we have successfully delivered the configuration, which is instantiated from the IETF model to the render devices using Mediator. Compared to the traditional ways of scripts, developing. There are several advantages of Mediator. The Python API Mediator offers minimal the barrier for developing. And Mediator also can offer support for complex scenarios of message conversion. And Mediator can offer a script template will help developing. And the plugin can help Mediator to integrate with different kinds of controllers. And the last mediator is coupled from the network management protocol, which have uh, enable a flexible deployment. From this hackathon, we learned that current ways of developing translation scripts are inefficient. So the goal of our project is make it easier and faster for the developing. So in the future, we will continue working on this project. We intend to implement automatic scripts generation, and also we will do more tests with different service provider. And here's our team member. Uh, here are the links of our open source project and the demo video. If you are interested, you can pay them a visit or contact us via email. That's all, thank you. Okay.
Well, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, RATS uh, EAT implementation. Yeah, so we don't see your presentation yet. I can see your video, but I don't think uh, we hear you either. So you have to unmute your audio. Looks like it's still muted. Do you see the icon to mute or unmute your audio? It, it seems like you, it, it flashes on for a second and then it goes away. Also the screen share had started, but then it seemed like it stopped. Maybe it's a matter of the, uh, the browser not being granted permissions. Okay, I think we will come back to uh, Thomas. Um, why don't we move on to DNS now? Okay, let me check if I can. We have your audio and your video. And now we're just waiting. It looks like the screen share is starting up. Okay. There we go. We can see it. Okay. So these are the results from the DNS hackathon project. Um, ah. So uh, we DNS people, the, we have a uh, normally I would go to the hackathon room and see. Uh, all my uh, fellow DNS people there, and then uh, start and decide on what what kind of features we are going to implement. Uh, and I maybe you know I, I could have used the Gather Town, but we uh, DNS people also have this organization on which most people's uh, DNS people are a member of, which is the DNS Org the DNS Operations and Analysis Research Center. And they have this uh, MetaMost uh, chat service, which I used to ask if other people uh, would like to join uh, the ITF uh, 109 hackathon for working on DNS projects. So 14 signed up, but most of them also had to work as usual during uh, this week. And uh, so they did not have dedicated time to work on the projects like we would normally have in a uh, in-person uh, hackathon. So there was not as much done as uh, we, we don't have as many projects to present it as, as in an in-person hackathon. That said, we worked on uh, one hack, which is interesting, which is draft Arendt's DNS error reporting. This saw the most work, I think. It's, uh, the draft is about uh, uh, error reporting, things that go wrong, uh, 
uh, on an authority server or in, uh, with, with DNS records. And instead of informing the requester of the uh, resource record about the error, uh, the error is sent to the authoritative server, which hosts the broken record. So, which makes sense, right? Because then the uh, uh, maintainer of that zone can do something about it. And so, the ch chat server worked quite well. We uh, immediately, uh, Roy solicited that, uh, or asked about uh, broken uh, uh, DNS zones. So we could have some sort of testing environment and uh, suggestions were uh, offered on the uh, chat servers. Um, uh, a implementation of a authoritative server that would return the option on where to report the uh, or file the uh, report about the brokenness of a, a, a name um, was created. And also a test server that would show the reports that came in about broken uh, DNS um, records. And so that uh, was done. Uh, so there's another site, you also need resolvers that send the eDNS option to the um, uh, authoritative uh, saying, I will, I'm willing to report errors to the uh, report server. But although many of the resolver implementations already have the extended DNS errors, we did not have a uh, implementation yet which reported to a, a specific uh, reporting server. But there was other, in the chat, there was other interesting discussion on uh, if that would, what that would entail, if it would work in practice, and also on how to, uh, how we could measure if this would work in practice. So another hack that was done is the uh, DNS zone digit digest. It's, you know, the DNSSEC provides integrity and authenticity for RR sets, for complete RR sets. A zone MD provides integrity and authenticity for complete zones. So a, a secondary authoritative server can be sure that it has the, serves the complete zone. Uh, there used to be a proof of concept tool written by the artist of the draft, but it was a bit cumbersome to use. And during the hackathon, uh, a new option was introduced in LDNS sign zone to uh, provide a zone MD resource record to a uh, zone without much hassle. Finally, uh, a lot of people or we're planning to work on uh, the new catalog zones draft and uh, test or do interoperability testing, but we didn't get to this. We were too much busy with uh, communicating and interacting about the, uh, the first hack, I think. But uh, a lot of pe people uh, mentioned that they still intend to uh, work on this over the weekend and then do a report of DNS catalog zones uh, interoperability testing uh, at the DNS Open Working Group session. So what we've learned is that I it's really missed the in-person hackathon because uh, you know it's it's better to have uh, ad hoc uh, conversations and social interaction in person then uh, but and also to have all the people dedicated on working on the hacks uh, but it it worked out quite well i think uh, the way we did it uh, we still had implementers focus on new ideas and standards and uh, we had valuable input i think uh, during this week which we might otherwise would have taken more time, or at least we would, we had the focused implementers uh, perspective on 
these new IDs and standards, which is very valuable. So um, I requested to do a uh, report of this uh, hackathon during the DNS op in uh, on Friday, which will give us some more time to finish some of the hacks. Uh, 14 people uh, joined the uh, MetaMost uh, service, which was, by the way, also public for other members or for anyone, basically, uh, which I uh, mentioned on the Hackathon uh, wiki page. Um, that's it. Okay. Oh, that's great. And certainly, uh, it's, uh, it's perfectly fine and encouraged to continue to work on uh, these things outside of uh, the week of the hackathon. So I'm glad you're planning on doing that. And, uh, and yeah, if you want to update or add to the report you have on the uh, yeah, uploaded to GitHub, uh, that'd be great. Sure. Do that. Okay. And Dominic, I see you're asking. Yep. LP lands next. Thank you. We'll switch over to you. So we all we see your uh, your screen share, but we also need your audio and video. Okay, there we go. Or at least can your audio. Yeah, the audio. Yeah, I can hear your audio now. Okay, I'm going to show the video briefly to show that I'm real. Hi, and then I turn it off to save. <laughs> okay. So the, It's, uh, it's uh, maybe perhaps a little choppy at times, but uh, it did okay, seem to be working. Okay, let's try it. I won't move my cursor too much on the screen so that I see a bandwidth for the audio. Okay, hi everybody. This is a report of the LP1 project. Um, we work for the LP1 working group, obviously. Um, it was our plan for the hackathon, uh, as in all the previous. Check the header compression and fragmentation. Uh, technology being developed at the LP1 working group, uh, which has been standardized uh, at, uh, as RFC 8724 last April. And uh, as usual, we want to improve the existing code base, uh, do some cleanup, do, um, implement some options, uh, details that are not in there yet, and also improve the documentation so we make it easier for people to use the open source uh, code that we provide. And also, as I'm going to show in the next develop connectors so that we can use that compression uh, technology over existing networks such as LoRaWAN or Sigfox or NB-IoT uh, more easily. And also this time we wanted to implement a uh, few features of a draft that we have at the LP1 work working group. It's still work in progress. It's not even adopted by the working group yet, but it's one of the extensions that we want to uh, specify on uh, on top of uh, RFC 8724. And also we want to, uh, if you implement it, commercial or academic, and we want to make sure we can do some intro testing between them uh, going forward. So we did this time. So I'm not expecting you to read the fine prints on the blog diagram. But what we have to write is uh, the end device that runs on an embedded microprocessor, microcontroller. And to use the application, uh, reading from uh, right to left, 
application on top of uh, the compression fragmentation layer. Then the device sends the payload on the LP1 network. And then we have, typically we have a gateway in the LP1 uh, network that uh, exposes an REST interface to the internet. And, and so what we Chic code on top of existing LP1 networks, commercial or experimental, that have this network server with a REST interface to the internet. So that's one thing that got done, and the other one was uh, uh, implementing a few of the features of the draft I just mentioned before, uh, which relate to uh, pings and ICMPv6 error messages. Um, and so the, like if you get a ping from the internet to the device that's IPv6 enabled through the use of check, you probably don't want to forward the ping over the LP1, which is severely energy constrained and time on air constrained. So the, the chic uh, layer uh, at the network server will uh, act as a proxy and probably respond uh, we to reply based on previous communications with the end device. Just to give you a slight idea of what we, we want to do. And, to, and we also did some um, uh, documentation cleanup. Now we have a user guide that's actually usable, which is better than it was before, because we had uh, uh, evolved the, the code and the, the user guide didn't match that. And so what we learned, um, we we loved uh, using Gather the Town. It worked great, uh, again, even uh, better than last time. We had the whiteboard uh, that we used. Uh, you know, to compare notes, uh, what's working, what's not, what do we do next? Um, I uh, work. Uh, for the morning meeting, uh, get the, the work started. Or So overall, I think we not available this week, but anyway, and and yeah, you see uh, happy faces. So. We're, we're very happy with how it, it went and how we advanced the work. That's it for me. Great. Uh, thanks a lot for, for that. And it was uh, uh, encouraging to see that uh, and hear that uh, the Gather worked well for you. I'm, I'm glad it did. I did notice quite a few people uh, using it throughout the course of the hackathon. So. Uh, but hopefully that, that continues to uh, improve and be more and more useful for us. Um, okay, next up we have quick measurements. Mm -hmm. 
see your audio. We don't have the. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, no, oh, no, I can hear you okay. and see you. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I will go. To unmute the audio. Okay, uh, I share my screen. Okay, I just granted you access. Okay. 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 I'm Fabio Bulgarella from Telecom Italia and uh, part of the quick measurement team. Uh, in this hackathon, uh, our goals uh, were to provide tools and uh, ideas for traffic performance monitoring, uh, especially considering the era of the new encrypted transport protocol uh, that are growing. And uh, uh, these tools and ideas uh, use the explicit flow measurement techniques uh, that are some uh, are some techniques that employ a few marking bits inside the header of each packet. Um, and these are done uh, for expose some information uh, on the network about loss and delay. And, uh, and this way we can, uh, we can achieve, uh, we, can, uh, we can measure traffic. Uh, another goal was to uh, update the, the spin dump tool, that is the, the tool uh, uh, developed by the Ericsson guys, uh, uh, that is really useful because can intercept uh, uh, a lot of uh, kind of traffic, uh, ICMP, TCP, Quick, uh, SCTP, and uh, and other stuff. What got done? Uh, we uh, try to expose a new idea. Uh, this new idea uh, is to to give the the monitoring power to customers, so make the customer choose uh, if they want or not uh, uh, share uh, the information about the traffic. We presented an Android explicit monitoring app that is based on, uh, on SpinDump, uh, in quick is uh, its name. And we did also a POC uh, live demo of the application during this hackathon. Uh, the, the two drafts involved in, in this project are the, um, the MDT explicit flow measurement and the use device explicit monitoring. Also, uh, we did also um, some spin dump maintenance. Uh, uh, for example, we fixed some problem on the TCP RTT computation, and uh, we added the, um, the support for the last quick version. These are some slides about uh, the, the application. As you can see, uh, with this application, we can intercept uh, uh, all the traffic flowing in, uh, in, in and out from uh, an Android mobile phone. We can track the application. Uh, we can track the connection and uh, and try to compute some information from uh, from the data that are exposed uh, on wire. Uh, these are real time mobile traffic monitoring. Uh, and uh, what we noticed uh, was that uh, uh, placing the explicit performance observer on user device uh, gives many advantages in terms of scalability, of course, other deployment, and also uh, measures pre precisions. So we notice that measurements are more precise uh, in uh, in the client because we can uh, we can remove uh, uh, the application delay uh, of the um, of, of the client side uh, and make the measurements more precise. These are another slide that uh, um, that gives an image of the application working during a YouTube uh, a YouTube transmission. As you can see. Uh, there's the um, there are some information about the connection. In this case, uh, we can see uh, the round trip time measured in a in a quick connection. Uh, in this case, is only uh, the one computed uh, exploiting the the quick handshake packets. Uh, in, in fact, you can see there's no spin bit activated in this connection. And uh, uh, what we think uh, is that operators uh, with a customer's permission could use this information to uh, promptly identify network problems and try to improve the overall, uh, the, um, the overall customer experience. And uh, other things uh, could be uh, to uh, improve also the network, uh, being able to locate uh, uh, that part of the network, uh, that area, for example, in mobile, uh, speaking of mobile network, uh, that area that are not uh, covered well.
Uh, these are the teams uh, members that took part do, during this hackathon. Uh, there are some guys from uh, Ericsson, uh, from Huawei, and uh, and some other guys like me from Telecom Italia. There's also the the GitHub of uh, of Spindamp that you can see uh, to uh, take all the information about uh, about the, um, the the software used to to make the this app working. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Fabio. Okay, next up we have Karsten. And ASDF. All right, we can see your presentation. No video is okay, but we need your audio. And you should just be able to unmute yourself. Okay. Better? There we go. Yep. Great. It's all yours. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know that after you unmuted me, I needed to unmute myself as well. Um, so, uh, good morning. Um, I'm sorry, but 6 a.m. means no video uh, for me. I don't want to scare you. Um, this uh, um, team is, is the ASDF team uh, getting ready for, for SDF uh, 1.1. Uh, 1. And um, ASDF is, is a new working group that was just uh, formed uh, based on the observation that uh, data models for IoT things are very different without uh, a need actually for this difference. Nobody gains from, from that uh, difference. Um, so um, about two years ago, a um, group of people came together from different standards organizations and created a liaison organization called One Data Model. And they worked on setting up processes to actually get the various SDOs uh, to, to converge uh, their data model so that the Bluetooth data model doesn't look that much different from an OCF or an OMA uh, data model. And, and everybody agrees on what a refrigerator or a thermostat or anything like that uh, is going to look like. And in that process, um, of course, the, the need for a common modeling format uh, came up, and in June, uh, a 1.0 version of such a modeling format uh, was agreed within one data model. And uh, then uh, uh, one data model uh, decided they really wanted the IETF to complete the specification of this specification language. Um, so uh, we did uh, get a new working group set up, and uh, now we are working on 1.1. And the idea is that we don't just uh, update the specification language in, in, uh, on paper, but we actually uh, try it out. So this is what this uh, hackathon uh, was about. And the idea was to go through the open issues that we had on STF 1.0 uh, and uh, write code that exercises the changes that are proposed. And uh, in the process, make sure that the, the about 200 uh, models, the, the SDF specs that we have, uh, actually can be updated along these uh, changes. So we don't just want to, to agree on a change and then later notice, oh, this, this is hard to implement. Uh, we want to have them implemented before uh, agreeing on them. And as, as a little uh, side activity, we had a look at uh, uh, Jana's uh, Yang to SDF uh, conversion uh, tool. Unfortunately, we didn't quite spend enough time uh, on that, uh, but I think at least uh, people got introduced to that and uh, we will probably pick this up later a bit. So what did we manage to do? We have uh, four uh, major issues on, on SDF 1.0. And uh, we managed to get work done on two of them. 
so we are pretty much sure that we have the the cross model referencing uh, nailed now. Uh, we came up with a convention on on the usage of of queries for those cross model references and uh, discussed how how models uh, transition their namespaces while they progress th uh, through through the process. On the issue of of aggregation or compound types, um, we uh, actually found that we can kind of simplify uh, SDF 1.0 by, by putting in this aggregation. And we tried that out and it looks good. Now we just have to finish the aggregation discussion and we probably can uh, do this in the working group meeting next week. So we will still have uh, work to be done today. So we will uh, meet in, in uh, the afternoon, European afternoon. Uh, uh, today and, and try to wrap up uh, that work. Uh, what we learned, um, we organized ourselves, uh, ourselves into a daily one hour meeting at a time where, where most people are awake and did all the code writing and spec bashing in between those one hour meetings. So we didn't set up additional conference. We just did our homework and uh, sent a few mail messages and, and then met again for this one hour uh, slot. Our main tool, of course, is Git and, and GitHub. Um, CodyMD turned out to be really useful. And uh, thanks for the, the IETF uh, CodyMD instance. That, that is, was our main uh, collaboration tool. And we did use uh, WebEx uh, with the usual problems of blank slides and, and all that. Uh, so this is the, the team. We, we had a, a small team with two um, IETF uh, first-timers. And you can find more at 1dm.org, which is the, the SDO that kind of kicked, or it's not an SDO, the liaison organization between SDOs uh, that uh, kicked off uh, this work and uh, our uh, GitHub, uh, our working group GitHub repository where the issues are that we worked on. Okay, well, fantastic. Seems like uh, ASDF uh, is off to a, a great start. <laughs> I think so. Uh, nice to have a, a hackathon at your, your first, because uh, this is the first IETF meeting. I think that that working group, I mean, that working group just started, as you mentioned. So that's yes. Okay, well, thank you, Carson. Uh, all right, uh, rough time. Implementing version three. Okay. All right. Yep, Let me see if I start a slideshow if it still shows up. Not shout. There so you go. Our hackathon plan was to implement rough time. Uh, there's implementations kicking around of earlier versions, but I wanted to update at least two to, or at least mine and someone else to uh, up, update theirs to draft I, IETF NTP rough time dash 03. Uh, rough time, if you're not familiar, is essentially certificate transparency for time. So in applications where you don't necessarily have a, have the, have a good source of time and want valid signatures designed to get a close enough time with high security guarantees to enable that. Uh, what got done? Well, we, we didn't really have a sort of get together and work work synchronously on it, but uh, I was able to set up a server on a branch of, of uh, Cloudflare's where it works um, repository, stand it up and Jonathan Lindquist wrote a client and we interoperated successfully. So apparently the spec is clear enough to for people to sit down and make it work hopefully without too much poking at an existing implementation. So that's a pretty good sign that the draft is maturing. And we learned quite a bit. So I learned, I run FreeBSD on the server I put the thing on, and I learned that the timing interfaces that we need, because rough time depends on monotonicity, you need to know the leap second. And this is not supported in POSIX, so we need an extension, and they're different. 
And so we got to deal with that issue. Uh, also, there was some confusion about the modified Julian date plus mi uh, microseconds since midnight representation we use in rough since noon. No, midnight. One of the two. I'll look it up uh, that we use. Uh, it's somewhat unusual as a time format. VMS fans might be happier with it. And what's very interesting about it is it's non unique. There are certain seconds that have multiple representations. And it's not always valid because days don't always have the same length in the number of SI seconds. And so these are things that libraries need to think about. And so there, there's work that needs to be done to get routines there that are tested and work well. OK, well, great. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, next up, we have BGP monitoring protocol and Yang push. And I've granted you the screen. Great, we see your video. Uh, make sure you enable your audio as well. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Then, then you see my screen. Uh, yep. Your um, yeah, we can see it. Your audio sounds sounds a little faint. Okay. Then that's oh, a bit closer. Okay. Yep. Excellent. So I'm Thomas from Swisscom, representing the the BMP and uh, Young project. Uh, this time on VMP, we're working on uh, uh, mainly on the path marking and the route policy attribute tracing drafts, uh, how they work together with the VMP local rip. But also, uh, we had some extensions on IP fix to get the BGP route distinguisher and uh, use that as well for the BMP log rip to, to IP fix forwarding plane uh, correlation. Uh, besides that, we want to, to, to look at the, the performance impact on, on BMP, on CPU, on memory, on the route processors, and monitor them with uh, Yang Push. On the Yang Push part, uh, we, uh, we started with, uh, with the UDP Notif and the distributed Notif implementation. So this is basically a very lightweight uh, uh, way of uh, collecting uh, Yang matrix from a uh, from a router, uh, especially in with the aim to directly expose the matrix from uh, network processors on on, on line card, uh, um, with the focus on, uh, on on accounting data. Uh, this is the so software. You uh, advanced slides. I don't know if you are. I'm sorry. We're still seeing your uh, just the first slide, or okay. That That's okay. Then I will try to be sure. You can put it in presentation mode. Uh, oh, I see. I see. So then let me just go back and I'll try. Share again. I'm sorry for that. Can you see the, the slide now? It looks like it's starting up. Just wait a minute. Sure. Sorry, now. So now it should work. So you should see the second page. Yes. Slide. Okay, yeah. great. So these were the, the BMP drafts, uh, these for the, the young push part. And 
These, these are the open source software uh, which we were using for our test environment. Uh, this is our uh, network topology with uh, the data collection, the, the, the BGP and the traffic generators, the, the M plus VPN network. At uh, this time, we added also other vendors into the network, mainly uh, Cisco, IOS, XRXC, Juniper Junos, and FR routing uh, for uh, IP fix and BMP. And uh, we were working also on the, uh, basically through NetConf get schema to get uh, the entire recursive uh, schema, including the imports, convert them uh, to, to, to JSON and uh, register them in the schema registry. And uh, what we learned from the lab environment is that in order then for the next step, uh, when we do the, the stress tests with, uh, with, with BMP, to see wherever the, the, the back pressure mechanism within the BGP BMP process is working, we need to increase our uh, scale in the data ingestion at the, at the time series data, database. So in order to make sure that we are able to, uh, especially in these high peaks, that we are able to grab the, the data within a very short period of time. On the data collection on PMACCT side, uh, the decoding uh, on route policy attribute testing uh, continued. We were working on uh, path marking and also the IP fix correlation now supports also the IE19, the route distinguished attribute. Uh, the UDP notice has been included in PMACCT now. Uh, it should be this upcoming one or two weeks being pushed to GitHub. Uh, this is an example of uh, our policy attribute tracing. So here you can see for on a MPLS PE router for a given prefix uh, in a, basically in which VRF, which route policy at which attachment point this prefix was traversing. Uh, this is the IP fix to BMP low clip uh, correlation now with the uh, IE90 attribute on IP fix. At uh, Huawei VRP, uh, the, the support, the BMP support was updated to the latest, latest uh, path marking and route policy attribute tracing uh, drafts and also now supporting the, the new UDP notice. Uh, header for a uh, young push. We were performing uh, the, the stress tests with, uh, with 100,000, 500,000, and 1 million BGP VPN for unicast uh, prefixes. And here, just some example. Uh, this is basically the, the CPU usage from the, 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 the two test sets with 100,000 and 500,000 routes. And above, you see when uh, before BMP was enabled, below when BMP is enabled. And as expected, uh, since the, the routes need now to be additionally exposed to the, the, the BMP collector, the CPU uh, usage is increasing. And in the memory, uh, as expected, through the, the back pressure mechanism between BGP and uh, BMP, the, the memory impact is uh, very minor. On, uh, we're using Wireshark, uh, the uh, sectors to basically troubleshoot uh, the data collection. So thanks to Alexis and Uli, who has been working on the implementations of the UDP notice and the BMP path marking sectors, we were able uh, to use them during our hackathon, and we are still currently uh, working on, on that and validating them. What we've learned is uh, the, it's our fourth hackathon, so team collaboration is getting better uh, by the hackathon and good spirits. Slack helped a lot to, to, get, to keep connected through the different time zones, but yet again, no beers and cocktails after.
Thanks. Oh, great. And yeah, this time we had also uh, some students on board from INSA, Tom and Axel from Swisscom, Marco, and also Kian from Zeng. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, I too uh, miss many aspects of the in person hackathon, but uh, but glad you're. Uh, you and others are finding this online format, uh, you know, at least a, a useful substitute. Uh, okay, so next up, IPv6, IOAM. Uh, Justin. I actually don't see Justin. Anyone else from that team here to present? Unless I'm just missing him, I don't see Justin or if he's maybe he's one of the undefined people. Okay, Justin, if you're here, either uh, unmute your, your mic or share your, sheen, share your screen or raise your hand or something. Otherwise, uh, we're going to uh, move forward. I'll just make a note of that and we'll come back to, uh, to that one. Oh, there. And Tom Henderson, yep, great. We'll move on to yours. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. Your, your screen share isn't quite right for us yet. We're seeing, okay, there you go. That's All right. There. Okay, um, I'm Tom Henderson. I'm with the NS3 project, uh, which is a discrete event network simulator. And we started to participate in the IETF hackathon. So for the last few sessions, uh, we've been focusing on NS3 models for the L4S architecture, which is being developed in the transport area working group. But for this hackathon, we focused more on a few other TCP related models, including our cubic model, uh, BBR v1, and a network testing tool uh, known as FLENS. And in general, what we were focusing on in, in this hackathon was alignments of some of our NS3 models uh, with uh, Linux implementations and running the code either on test beds or in software frameworks used to exercise the Linux code. Um, so on this slide, it just notes uh, a few of the RFCs that, uh, that were involved in, in these models. Uh, the specific things that our team uh, sought to work on this week was that we were missing uh, support for ECN marking in our cubic model and overall alignment with how uh, Linux implementation performs in that regard. Um, we have a BBRV1 model that we've been working on. A team of students at NITK Sarathkal was working on aligning this with Linux testbed results. And then we also have been trying to line up what we've um, observed as results from using the Flint traffic tool on test beds with uh, a version of Flint that we have also for NS3. And so just to summarize, we had a team of uh, five people working. Um, we did implement a new state in our TCP uh, socket uh, model that implements the congestion window reduced and fast recovery phase uh, due to ECN marking that's experienced in the network and uh, achieve pretty good alignment with uh, the Linux implementation. Uh, and the URL to that, uh, all of our uh, code trees is, is listed on this slide. Uh, we got good alignment with our BBR model with uh, testbed results from Linux. And we made some progress figuring out some discrepancies that existed in our um, NS3 uh, Flint's uh, RUL test suite 
compared to the, what we were observing on large bandwidth delay product links when we used uh, Linux test beds for a comparison. Uh, lessons learned. Um, well, I guess uh, one of the interesting things is that there, in the past week, the TCPM and ICCRG groups have picked up some discussion on possibly revising Cubic, uh, the RFC, and that RFC actually is missing information about how to respond to ECN marking. So that might be a piece of feedback that we could uh, uh, deliver to the to the working group, and we'll we'll try to follow up on that. And then finally, uh, these are the five uh, people who participated, and we had three newcomers this time. Okay, that's great. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and good luck with uh, following up within the working group. I hope that goes well. Okay, next up, uh, Paul, I guess you have a couple presentations, I2NSF and also IP Wave. Hello, Charles, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good, okay, great. Hello, uh, uh, my name is uh, Jeon Paul Jung um, from SKKU. So this time, um, as you can see, um, uh, my team um, get together in uh, some conference room, and we're working for, oh, screen is not? Not yet, we don't see your screen. It says, uh, it says it's being shared, but it hasn't popped up yet. Okay. Is it asking uh, you for permission, perhaps? Okay, so how can I share the screen? This one? Oh, this one. Okay, okay, share the screen. Okay, here you go. Okay. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Okay, great. There we go. That so, looks good. Okay, okay great. So, uh, my team uh, is uh, I2NSI Framework uh, Project. My name is Jeon Paul Jung from SKKU. Uh, this is the poster. Um, so we have two professors, two researchers from uh, ATRI, and also we have uh, five students, SKKU, uh, Liberty University in the United States, and also Sungshil University and uh, Kenya, Gyeongbuk National University. So basically, uh, this time, uh, my uh, our ITONAS working group tried to extend the framework for security management automation. So basically, um, uh, we have uh, I2NS the user for the dashboard uh, deliver high level uh, policy and also security controller translate that policy into low level policy in per security uh, services uh, on top of uh, network security functions such as a fiber, replica, etc. This time we implemented the I2NS analyzer to um, monitor the activity of NSF. Also, we detect uh, security attack. So we implemented a, a monitoring interface uh, using uh, last comp and then we collect monitoring data such as the CPU UCGs and also uh, disk um, UCG and also uh, traffic incoming outgoing statistics gathered. So I think analyzer will uh, analyze for that kind of activity. So we have a, a for uh, interfaces, uh, previously we implemented uh, also we uh, we showed the, the pro concept restoration, consumer facing, and NSF face interfaces. This time we implemented the monitoring interface. Okay, so uh, we implemented the two uh, draft additionally NSF monitoring data model, also security management automation for uh, I2NSF data analysis. So this is the network topology. So we uh, added the new component analyzer. So right hand side shows open sources and also minimum spec for open stack. So uh, what got done? Uh, so we okay established I2NSF framework. In addition to that, we implemented the NSF monitoring interface to measure the performance of uh, CPU memory disk interfaces. Uh, this is the our component. 
left hand side, this one is a web based I2S app for user specify time based web filter. Right side, security controller and the data uh, developers management system, DMS. So basically, uh, this uh, hackathon, uh, you can see we specify the data type, such as traffic from uh, interface. Also, we asked uh, system resources, CPU, disk, uh, memory, so we can get that uh, monitor data you know, over JSON over uh, RASCON comp. Okay. So what we uh, learned, uh, we realized the feasibility of NSF monitoring by a last comp or next comp for security management. Next time, uh, we'll continue to support a monitoring interface using that comp. Also, we uh, will enhance security policy translator for uh, automatic uh, setting and mapping uh, between high level young model and low level young model. And Finally, uh, we also uh, implement a new interface, uh, such as an uh, application interface from uh, analyzer to security controller to enforce new uh, security policy or augmentation of security policy. Okay. This is open source uh, project GitHub. Uh, this is a video uh, demonstration. So uh, this uh, one week, uh, my student and other uh, collaborator from Atri and also uh, Sungshil University, Gyeongbu National University uh, student, we gathered and we worked together and we uh, make it. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, that's it. Thank you, uh, Charles. So Charles, uh, next, yeah, can you hear me? Oh, what, what's going on? Please, yeah, there is no sound. Yeah. You didn't talk? Oh, he, he didn't? Hmm. Okay, uh, Charles, your microphone uh, looks like mute, muted. I guess I was muted, didn't realize it. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So um, th th sure. that covered both. Uh, no, may I continue IP way? Yeah. Yeah, I go right ahead. Okay, okay sure. We don't hear or see you right now. Okay, can you hear okay, me? Okay, there we go. Yep. Okay, good. Camera, okay, camera. Okay, camera also in every, okay? Yeah, we got both now, perfect. Okay, thank you, yeah. So this project uh, is about uh, IP wave, uh, basic protocol as a project. So I'm champion from SKKU. So this is uh, the poster for this project. Uh, we have uh, two professors, me and uh, Professor Young An Kim from Sungshil University. And also we have uh, three universities, SKKU students and Sungshil National, uh, University and Gyeongbuk National University students, okay? So this is student project. So previously, uh, we demonstrated the uh, IP wave uh, basic uh, protocols. ITF uh, 106, the Hackathon uh, project last year in Singapore, uh, we demonstrated the IP button 6 packet transmission over to OCB enabled Wi Fi uh, modules in vehicular networks. Last uh, summer, 
uh, 108 hackathon project, uh, we show the simulation of a context aware navigation protocol for road crash avoidance. Uh, this time we tried to implement uh, context aware navigation protocol using uh, Wi-Fi OCB mode. So this uh, hackathon, uh, we tried to support context aware navigation protocol over IP wave. Uh, this is, uh, is the draft. So right hand side, uh, you can see uh, currently uh, we are um, trying to implement the Linux okay, extension for IP version 6 neighbor discovery for the robot uh, Ubuntu Linux kernel. So this uh, model is uh, Ion Robotics Aron. Uh, now, uh, right now we yeah, doesn't support the, the movement of robot, but uh, next month we try to enable our code on, on top of this robot. So basically, a context aware navigation protocol case, you can see this is a highway scenario. Some vehicle hit the, some up obstacle and following vehicle observed. And then this V1 detected the, uh, this dangerous situation and disseminated this uh, emergency context message to neighbor uh, vehicles. So basically, IP wave context aware navigation protocol, we uh, using IP versus neighbor discovery messages to contain uh, co uh, population context message and emergence uh, context message for driving condition. So this is uh, the message format for vehicle uh, mobility information. Uh, option uh, one of uh, neighbor discovery option in IP version six. So it supports uh, CCM, uh, ECM. ECM is emergency context message or uh, compilation message. So we uh, set up uh, environment using two laptop, having uh, Ubuntu Linux. Also, we use the SRS Wi-Fi, the module for. Uh, to the 11 OCB mode, okay? So this time uh, we try to uh, implement the neighbor discovery for context aware navigation protocol, but uh, there was some uh, problem and issues. So uh, we fixed some uh, compiling uh, issue, but uh, we try to um, yeah, implement the generation of uh, vehicle inform mobility information option also uh, deliver and process at the receiver side. So next time, uh, Hackathon, we try to demonstrate on top of a uh, robot car for um, context aware navigator protocol. So this is an open source project. Uh, we continue uh, making uh, our IP wave based uh, context aware navigation protocol. So I think next month uh, uh, our uh, community can access uh, this website to get our implementation. So this is the, our uh, team work. So in the same way, uh, we work uh, this week in the uh, conference room. So left hand side, the participants and team members and uh, we uh, work together with the I2NSF and BMWG uh, teams. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Great. And thank you, Paul, for, for both presentations. And, and glad you already have some ideas about what you want to do for the next hackathon. That's uh, okay. Thank that's you. Yeah. No. Okay, next up we have Mud. Can you all hear me? Sure can. Awesome. Uh, let's see if we can get my screen to display. There we go. Yes, I want to share it. Okay. All right. Can oh, my black. All right. Can everyone see everything? It tells us you're you're starting, but we don't see okay. it. Oh, there we go. I see. Okay. Share. Let's 
do that. All right. Okay. Very good. Great. All right. So, uh, hi everyone. I'm Paul Trotsky. I'm representing the Mud Group here. Um, so, the project we worked on was titled Mud, Mud PD, and such. Uh, we'll make a little more sense in a second. Um, so, Mud is the manufacturer usage description. It's RFC 8520, um, and Mud essentially focuses on device intent. Uh, creating allow lists, defining what hosts can communicate with the device through defined protocols and ports. Um, so the primary goal here was to work on MUD PD, um, for, uh, which aims to assist in building the files that are needed to conform to that MUD specification. Um, so our plan was to get some feedback and usability on the usability and uh, to identify some bugs for the MUD PD tool. Um, we uh, also were aiming to integrate Muddy, which is a Python command line tool uh, to help with formatting mud files. So we want to integrate Muddy into Mud PD itself. Um, and we wanted to add some updates to Mud PD tool to improve the usability um, from the feedback that we would get. So what we got done was that we, uh, we actually identified a bug with the current Mud file generation wizard, uh, which is probably the best place to find a bug since we're already working to replace that current MUD file generation wizard. So we're actually replacing that with MUDDY, uh, which was actually a tool that was uh, developed at the IETF 105 hackathon um, based on a, a tool that was already was uh, created before that. Um, so we also ended up discussing an option field in the PCAP NG file format. Um, this was primarily to see if we can provide machine readable contextual information about the MUD file itself, or sorry, about the packet capture itself. Because um, right now we had plan to embed, uh, basically embedding P, uh, uh, JSON into the comment field. So we were looking for a, a more elegant solution than that. Um, and then we uh, developed a bunch of new code, which can be found at the GitHub there, um, the US NIST give, uh, gov um, on PD project there. So uh, to wrap things up, we uh, these were the, the, the members of the team this, uh, this hackathon. Uh, we definitely kind of wish we could have been there uh, been all together in person, it definitely helps with having the ad hoc conversations and discussions and figuring out bugs uh, just hands on versus trying to remotely uh, solve issues. Um, so that's uh, that's Mud PD. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks for that. I'm glad you guys were able to get some stuff done, even if it wasn't uh, wasn't optimal setup for it. Okay, BMW G. Oh, can you hear my? Yep. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yep, can she see your your screen too? Hello, I'm Han Xin Yang um, in I I uh, Internet Infrastructure Research Center in the South Korea. Um, today, I will present about the result of the Hackathon 109 about the containerized inter infrastructure benchmarking. So basically, um, our goal is that uh, what kinds of resource are packed to the containers networking. So uh, we have the one draft you can see. The, our draft uh, with this link, and the, the uh, we have the two core of the our the draft. First one is uh, Hackathon. The first one is implementing real container infrastructure with the various network model, and second one is uh, verifying the performance uh, based on the our draft. So uh, last time we also joined uh, one years ago, so we joined the. Uh, ITF Hackathon 106 in this, at Singapore, and at that time we uh, test networking performance with the uh, DPDPK and the Conti VPP. So, uh, uh, and then the, one of the core of the, the uh, back then is the figure out the um, figure out the skill scheduler uh, really up back to the networking performance or not. So you can see the result with our draft. Uh, uh, at, at this time, we 
uh, we also make the test bed with the uh, SRIB and DPDK. You're also one of the user space model, but it's a pass through model. So um, uh, based according to the, our draft, we mentioned that the huge page will be affected to the uh, um, networking performance. So we want to figure out the, the relationship uh, between a correlation between um, the huge page with uh, and the networking performance with the uh, user base space based model. So um, in this hackathon, hackathon we um, uh, set up the, our test bed like this. So we, we use the three server. The one is for the master and another one is for the worker node for the container. And the last one is for the uh, packet generator. So we use the T-Rex generator to make the packet and E4 to the worker node and back get back the packet and then they figure out the performance at the T-Rex generator. So, um, uh, we follow the, this data pass and uh, we we uh, modify the huge pages and uh, test the networking performance with an SRIB DPDK networking architectures. So uh, in this echo we uh, uh, we got this the graph. We think that the huge page does not affect to the networking performance. Because uh, uh, basically, when you test it, we the one of uh, the maximum size of the MQ is a uh, uh, one thousand five hundred eighteen. So I think it's is um, is enough for the huge pages. But uh, we need more testing uh, to figure out um, the relationship between the application and the huge pages too. And we also got the many errors because of the memory and the huge page uh, setup because it's really bit complicated. So it's not easy to change it uh, several times. So it also one of the, our reasons. And uh, next echo song, we will try to figure out the, the talking uh, model, uh, the corner based networking models. Uh, such as EBPF, and we are so until now we uh, we tested with the uh, north south traffic, but next time we are trying to uh, use east west traffic pattern and the uh, test with the container talking model. Uh, so this is our team. So thank you for listening. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, well, so now we have two presentations that we, uh, we skipped over, and I know the one for uh, rats. Why don't we go back to that one? Hi, Charles, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you see me? And now I can see you. It must be a horrible view, but uh, anyway. Okay, let's now we just okay. And I see you're asking to show oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Can you see the the slides? Yes. yes, I can. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um so, uh, what was our plan? Plan was to implement it, uh, the entity attestation token, uh, which has now reached zero four. Um, I wanted to check the state of the spec in terms of uh, implementability. Uh, what was missing was this, what needs fixing, etc. And uh, the attack strategy was a fifty-fifty split by attestation claim between me and Sergey. Um, so we go in parallel and code and test, and then we we get together to review the code, we merge the code and then iterate. Um, and th that's very convenient because uh, uh, th these attestation claims are basically pieces of uh, CDDL that you can really uh, implement in isolation and then have an integration point, which is convenient at a later point in time. 
Um, what got done is a full implementation of the draft in 17 PRs and around 2,400 uh, lines of Go code, including 52 tests, uh, which are uh, table driven. So the, the test cases that are much more than that. And implementation is uh, on GitHub at uh, the URL that you can see, there is on it. Uh, apart from coding like Matt, uh, we had some design discussion around um, uh, the API ergonomics for dealing with input files, that is um, um, things that expand the semantics uh, of, uh, of, of EAT, uh, of the EAT format. And we started some discussion around that and we you know, discussing it in the open and on GitHub, so if you want to participate in the discussion, there you go. Um, there was no interrupt this time because the other, uh, the only other implementation that we know of, it uh, was not around. Um, and the demo is this fantastic screenshot from my laptop, which shows the um, test being run again, uh, um, against the uh, code base, showing a fantastic 84.8 coverage, it's not great, but anyway. Um, what we learned uh, is that the draft in its form is actually implementable without too much pain. Um, so it's sort of mature. Um, and we provided some feedback to uh, the draft authors and the wider uh, rights working group uh, in form of an email, uh, which we see in the Akathon report. Um, and here you are the link. And wrapping up, uh, okay, so the, the team this time was minus Q. It was Sergey and I, and Sergey was a first timer. And the project uh, which we're doing this implementation is the very recent project, which is an open source uh, project. That, um, the intent is, is, is to provide at the station verification components that one can assemble uh, to build a complete attestation verifier. And the verifier is one fundamental role in the RATS architecture. Um, so uh, logically, we are starting from the grounds up, building the building blocks at this time, and um, and this includes other standard standards and SDOs. Uh, apart from the ATF, we are uh, we are crossing the TCG and ISO boundaries here. And we started with it. Actually, we started uh, with Cosweed a week ago, um, and that was also a good way to 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 provide feedback to the Cosweed authors and the SACM working group. Um, and nothing. If you're if you're interested in attestation, please go to the Verizon page uh, and and look for the presentation material there. And another thing is that we want to make this um, the first of a series of hackathon to be used as a sync point for the Verizon project. So, if you're interested, next time we can organize a bigger table and you know, bring your own ideas and and whatnot. I think that's it. Thank you and sorry for before. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, glad, uh, glad we got things sorted out. Cheers. Okay, so we also skipped over Justin, who I received an email from Justin. I know he was having some network difficulty. Uh, Justin, I don't see you, so I don't think you were able to make it back. Um, was there? Is there anyone else? Uh, here on behalf of uh, Justin, who would uh, be able to pres uh, present the IPv6 IOAM. Okay, if not, um, just encourage people to, to take a look at, at the presentation that he's uploaded. Um, with that, let's see. So just a couple more things I wanted to share. Um, one, uh, so there's actually a draft that, that, that I put together and uh, uh, Michael already reviewed and gave me some, some comments. Uh, I didn't share it here with the hackathon list uh, after I posted because I didn't want to kind of distract from people working on their projects. But, uh, but if you do have some time now, uh, you know, I'd appreciate if you could take a quick look and review it. It, it, it covers the hackathon in general. It's um, the reason that, uh, or what kind of the impetus for putting it together 
was because we're switching to this virtual format and we're looking at the IETF, how we can, you know, do a better job with online meetings in general and the hackathon being kind of one example of something that, uh, that needs to be tailored to, you know, perhaps run a little bit differently as, as many of you have seen when it's in an online format. But the draft actually is meant to cover both, uh, cover the hackathon in general and to capture the things that, uh, that Barry and I have in our head from having run the hackathon over a number of years and to get that down on paper uh, or in, in a draft to kind of um, talk about aspects of the hackathon and how to run them in person and then also online. So um, just got the draft out uh, in time for uh, this IETF. It still needs a lot of work, but your review of it at any time and any feedback would be uh, very welcome. Uh, in addition to that, let me uh, just go back to the slides. So we finished up with the presentations. Um, before we leave, I, I do want to say thanks again to, to ICANN. Uh, ICANN has uh, been uh, the financial sponsor for the uh, hackathon the last several. They've uh, already um, signed up to sponsor the next hackathon um, at ITF. 110. Uh, uh, DevNet continues to be a, a supporter of the hackathon and um, you know we still welcome additional sponsors uh, of the hackathon. So um, you know the more the merrier. It's uh, we really appreciate people helping us keep this event going and keeping it free and, and open to everyone. Um, so at, at IETF 110, we already know it's going to be an online meeting. We know we'll, we'll do the hackathon uh, to a large extent, very similar to what we did uh, this time around, um, using you know probably very similar tools. Um, of course, we'll try to make incremental improvements. And um, uh, oh, sorry, Justin, I see you. You just joined. Um, if you want to, you're welcome to present. We'll go back to your, uh, I can stop sharing if you want to uh, just go ahead, jump on with your audio and video. We can jump to your presentation. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Sean. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, I'll stop sharing and glad you made it just in time. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so can you see my slides? Yes, sure can. Sorry. Okay, thank you. So, hi everyone. Um, our team was working on the IPv6 IOM project, and on the agenda, uh, we wanted to improve the kernel implementation. And actually, we already have uh, sent uh, a patch upstream a few months ago, um, and it still needs a little bit of work uh, to get accepted, but it's definitely on the right track. Uh, also, uh, we wanted to update the VPP implementation for IOM because it was based on a very old uh, version of the draft. And this task was uh, already a uh, work in progress before the hackathon. And both the kernel and VPP implementations are uh, based on the following draft. So the IOM IPv6 options and the IOM data. And uh, of course, on uh, last version for uh, both of them. And so after that, we wanted to test uh, the interrupt between uh, the kernel and VPP. And we also wanted to implement a new draft uh, that could allow us to uh, insert and remove extension headers and options uh, in flight, uh, which is currently forbidden by the RFC uh, 8200. And uh, we think that it could be valuable for IOM and solve some problems. So what got done? Uh, we had no time to uh, test the interrupt. And anyway, uh, the VPP implementation still needs some uh, work to do so. Uh, all in all, implementations, so both for the kernel and, and VPP, are going well. And the implementation on the new draft um, was up and running, and it looks quite promising. And so here are a few uh, results. Uh, from uh, the attribution option. This is the new draft. So basically, we have uh, a bunch of options here. And uh, 
each option uh, that were inserted by a node uh, on the path is linked to an attribution option. And here uh, we want to remove this option, which is at the top of the stack, so it's allowed. And you can see on the right that uh, this part has been removed and the padding and alignment is uh, being uh, taken into account. So what we learn, uh, actually we have the IPv6 encapsulation solution, which is compliant with the RFC 8200, but it also brings several problems. The first one is how do you choose the destination address? So the address of uh, the exit of the tunnel for IOM, because you, you can configure it statically, but uh, you never know uh, if the routing changes or whatever. So it's hard to determine uh, this address easily. Uh, since you do encapsulation, you also have to do an animus decapsulation and that could uh, potentially create a security hole because uh, you have uh, to, to, to check that this decapsulation is uh, something you want. And also you're not sure that the, the modified packet will take the same pass as the original one. So those three uh, reasons uh, make it the IPv6 encapsulation solution hard to implement. So we believe that the new draft uh, implementing the attribution option could be a solution for IOM and could be good to push it for working group adoption at six men. And we will also make a few suggestions to IPPM for uh, the IPv6 uh, IOM draft options. So team members, I worked with Tom on the kernel part and first timers Mauricio and Jerome were involved on the VPP part. So I want to thank everyone uh, involved in this project and thank you all for uh, attending this presentation. And thank you, uh, Justin, for the presentation. I'm glad you were here. Thanks again, Charles. I know that worked out. Yeah. OK. So with that, I'm just going to jump back to uh, to this kind of as a, a bit of a closing slide. But actually, um, you know, for I hope many of you will, will join us for the next hackathon. Uh, there will be some questions related to the hackathon in the uh, overall IETF um, 109 survey that goes out. It'd be great if you could provide feedback there. Um, and you know, feedback as to ideas or ways we can, you know, what maybe didn't go as well that, that we can do better for, for 110 or, or new things for us to try. Uh, very interested to hear that. Um, we have some time now if anyone has any, uh, any thoughts. Um, some of you shared as part of your presentation things that you found very helpful, like, you know, whether it was Gather or Code EMD or, um, so, so, so that, that was great to see. Um, but if anyone had any, anything else they wanted to share, ha happy to hear it now. Um, you're also welcome to send me an email, send an email to the list, whatever works best for you. And, and feedback in the survey will help too. Okay. Well, well, thank all of you for uh, participating in the hackathon and, and for putting together the presentations and sharing them. Uh, I think it'll be a very valuable. Um, uh, and uh, thanks to the folks from Miteco, uh helping me out along the way as we were trying to get all this working. I, I think it worked out pretty well. So um, yeah, rest up over the weekend and hope your IETF week goes very well also. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, good night or enjoy the rest of your day, depending on where you're at. <laughs> Charles, thanks. Thank you, everybody.